Florian asks, I want to use the news articles in SharePoint. Ooh, lowercase p in SharePoint. That's a problem. Oh, uh, that's a demand. I use the news articles in SharePoint for internal documentations. Is it possible to create something like a copy of that site template and adding a custom entry to the menu like new documentation? And is it also possible to filter the news web part based on a custom column of my site and adding the entry to this column in a simple way when adding a new article? This is one of my favorite tricks. I did a um, actually did a Tip Tuesday on this, the filtering part of it. But I love to take things like HR documentation and convert them into pages so that it's not just a doc like a 250 page employee manual. Here's the employee manual broken out into specific topics on pages and then a link with the PDF version as a resource if they need to have the printable version because it's easier to keep up. It's always live and it's more searchable than a PDF document. Yeah. And then I use a custom column and in the, the um, gotcha is that you can only use those custom columns as a filter in that, in that site. It's not cross site. It's only in that site. So you can, it's a custom property is what you filter by. And mm -hmm. I, I always create one called news feed. And then in my different news web parts, filter by whatever's on that news feed. Th those are my tricks, but I did do a tip Tuesday mm -hmm. on that. I can give you a link to that if you want it. So I, I wonder why they're going with news page and not just a site page. What would the rationale be for that? Well, site pages are news pages. They're just mm -hmm. designated as news. Um, yeah. And I like those because it's hard enough to keep your SharePoint sites fresh with new information. Every year you can recycle because you may have new people. Just take that same news and now it's just another, did you know? And, you know, we have this, you know, here's our education benefit or here's what we offer as far as leave options or, you know, things that you can just recycle on your site as news. And I think as long as they weren't putting that on the homepage where there's actually news news, and mm. article news that would be fine. So a dedicated site perhaps, or a site where the topic's a little bit different than all company news. Um, I do appreciate the question. Um, a copy of that site template, not exactly, but you can have an additional site and have news. Yeah, you can have news web parts anywhere you want to, but to have it say new documentation, don't know of a way to edit the default labels inside yeah. of a web part modern. So what, what you may just need to do is just have a text above the web part instead of showing the web part title. So it doesn't say news or something like that. You could do something very fancy there. Very fancy. I'm sorry. Very fancy does not apply to that, but different. Um, and just explain to folks that it's, out of the box, that's what you have. Unless, Norm, I'm looking at you now, you go to an app and you utilize an app to kind of capture some of this. I've had customers over the past that went to the Power Platform and they used a Power app to host their documentation and create it, hmm. search it, and then make it findable utilizing a list in the background. That's interesting. Yeah. One of the things that came to mind when I was hearing the question for the first time is they're talking about templating, reusability. And I, I believe we have that functionality inside of a site page. They could create their own page and template. I'm just, I think it might be able to be leveraged as a news article as well, but they could put their corporate branding, their standard layouts, um, and have some reusability there. And then now Sherry, Sherry brought up adding the custom column. Um, and having those custom like news article attributes and the other metadata attributes that are there. But there's something else we can do if it was going to scale beyond, beyond the site and we would use a metadata term store, which is a mouthful to say, but basically it's that same custom column, but held at a much higher level that your SharePoint administrator could help facilitate. And so creating that type of taxonomy for the organization is something that you could just leverage in one site or across multiple sites to have consistency in what you're calling those columns mm -hmm. or those values. Mm -hmm. But it's, you know, it, 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 it's interesting this this it, it's interesting that this I mean these problems these fundamental problems around documentation have existed for 
my 32 years in tech. In the late 90s, I mean, one of the things we started using is is a software configuration management, so code management software with the branching and labeling, but to manage the complexity of the documentation and break it up in a way just like what we're talking about. So it's not all in one single doc and harder to search and to go and edit and have it broke out by the by the outline, the various components. So then you can assign to somebody to update this section where the rest of the documentation, you know, doesn't need to be touched uh, if it, there are no changes to it, but just that relevant section that needs to be updated um, can can be modified and have its own history uh, around that. But it's, you know, we, these are the same fundamental issues that organizations are asking for around documentation. As old all as the, SharePoint itself. All yeah. the old, yeah, before that, but it's it's all the old problems are all new just new new people we worried about this most those people that i worked with on these problems back in the 90s have all retired <laughs> and the new generation saying hey this is an issue it is, it is. <laughs> but but i do like the the approach that cherry outlined just have everything as a site page or a news article it's it's probably like one less click to get at the actual content versus like drilling into that PDF file. Yeah. Well, and you just have to remember that the pages library is just like any other document library. You can customize it, add workflows to a pages library, just like any. There's lists and there's libraries. The only two bones is SharePoint. Yeah. And pages libraries are just a special library with a different content type. In them. And you can do like Sherry's saying, just like a document library, you can do content approval. So just because somebody saves a page or submits a page, like in the news, you submit the page, but it doesn't mean the whole world's going to see it. It can go through a process, make sure the right information is there before it's exposed to the rest of the organization. Yeah. And you're not talking about heavy handed approval processes. You're like, this is all out of the box. This is stuff yeah. that just works. Just content approval. Yeah. yeah. It's a full button nice. in versioning settings. Yeah. Versioning. It, Versioning settings or advanced settings? Yes, one of the two. Oh, that one of the two. Okay. For my 15 years <laughs> of SharePoint, I always have to flip a mental coin. Which one am I going to click? <laughs> but I think it's in versioning setting because okay. then you can, I think, because then is when you say who can approve drafts or whatever. Okay. But we well, don't those have to are, go down that road. Those are two places I always tell SharePoint admins, you know, site admins, Go in there and look at what's in there. Things like um, being able to turn off the, or so it opens like your Excel files directly in Excel and not in the web first, things like that. There's a lot of great settings on those two little checkboxes. Mm -hmm. yep.